Protocols for systematic and scoping reviews. Why is registration not enough? This is the question that we were aiming to answer when we wrote this article. Hien and I want to help authors to understand why we insist that their review submissions are based on the pre-existence of a fully developed protocol. So we wrote this editorial, hopefully to make our position clear and to convince you that you should have an a priori, complete and publicly available protocol for your systematic or scoping review before you start. A registration is not a full protocol. An a priori, complete, publicly available protocol is important and it's required in submitting reviews in JBI evidence synthesis. A complete protocol is an explicit plan for a systematic review that meets the requirements of the PRISMA statement and the PRISMA statement for systematic review protocols, the PRISMA P. Those list all the requirements that you should have in your protocol, which are far more than required for a registration on Prospero or anywhere else you might register your protocol. Item two of PRISMA P recognizes that Prospero registration does not include all the information required and the guideline encourages you as authors to have both. It points out that registration is a useful starting point for the development of a protocol, but it's not the same as a full protocol. And so there's a three part roadmap, if you like, of conducting your review that starts out with registration, then a full protocol, and then your review completion. All three of those parts belong together and this roadmap should always be followed when you're aiming to conduct a good quality systematic or scoping review. So what is full protocol? A full protocol is an explicit plan for a systematic review that needs to justify the conduct of the review, but it also does a lot of other important things. Your protocol needs to define the essential term or provide operational definitions if those are what you are using. It plans out all the methods prospectively so that you are able to conduct your review in a really smooth and straightforward way. It improves the quality, reproducibility and trustworthiness of your review, so why wouldn't you have one? Prospective registration is important too, however, one of the other is simply not enough. Having a full protocol helps you. One really critical element I felt it was important to include in this editorial was to point out that reviews should not be commenced without knowledge of the research landscape relevant to the topic. When you're engaging with the relevant literature, not only are you looking for that evidence of a gap, but you're also finding out what the research is like, issues to plan for, perhaps there are diverse terms or definitions that might be used, study results may report both eligible and ineligible data so you need to plan for that or maybe there's a lack of eligible studies that use a particular research method or there may be existing reviews that have already answered your question. Having gone through this process while you compile your protocol is actually tremendously beneficial. Your review question will go through multiple iterations as will your inclusion criteria so that they're in their best possible versions before you start your systematic review. An a priori complete protocol provides a clear justification for the review topic and outlines a structure plan for the review. Editors and peer reviewers are more likely to view the review as a methodologically sound and publication worthy when it references the complete publicly available protocol. Making protocols public. You don't have to publish your protocols if that's not what you want to do. You can make it public in a lot of different ways. You can attach the protocol document to your Prospero registration. OSF allows you to upload your documents there also, and other preprint services also accept protocols. You just need to check their acceptance guidelines. So don't feel that you need to go through the whole publication process for the protocol in order to make your protocol public. They are two different things. Public access to the full details of the protocol is vital for transparency and rigour. We are happy for the protocol to be public at any permanent link, as long as we can look at it and see that there was a complete protocol before the review was started. This reassures us as editors that you conducted the review following the methods stated in your a priori protocol. So in conclusion, if you are wishing to submit your systematic or scoping review to JBI Evidence Synthesis, you need to have 
an a priori complete and publicly available protocol in addition to any registration you may have done. And if you are submitting your systematic review to this journal, you will need to have all three parts of the roadmap, the prospective registration with key details, an a priori complete publicly available protocol and a complete review and ensure that they are all aligned. We hope to see your review submitted to our journal soon.